Hello and welcome. This video is a recording of the reveal party for the RUAC Spoon Challenge number 29. RUAC stands for Rise Up and Carve, which is a free online and international club for spoon carvers, where we meet using Zoom at all hours of the day and night in many time zones to carve spoons, hang out, discuss craft, and build community. You can learn more about Rise Up and Carve at riseupandcarve.com. One of the activities we do as a club is a shared template challenge, where we challenge ourselves to carve spoons from the same template, usually provided by a club member, and then we come together as a club and reveal our spoons and discuss them and the template. What follows is the reveal party for spoon number 29, provided by professional craftsperson Rachel Bainton. All of the templates can be found on the website. Rachel's template is different in that it is an axe template, meant to get you to a consistent shape and size where after the knife work can differ. Rachel provided further information in two videos, an axe video and a knife work video. You can find these full videos and many others on the Rise Up and Carve YouTube channel. Now on to the reveal party, which begins during the aftermath of an amusing situation created by one of our more charming participants. It's quickly explained what's happening, but if you want to jump to the reveal proper, you can find that chapter mark in the video description. Sent the text to everyone to read? Did he send out that whole paragraph to, so uh, have you, you all? Have you all gotten this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Busted. I went That's as far, why I'm though, here. As... I thought I was reading it out. I went as far as the carbon number nine last night to support it. So. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> so we all thought we were special, chosen by Kevin to represent. No, I think the joke is on us, on all of us. <laughs> Oh, that's number game. nine to sign it. You just dip the pointy tip in ink and you can sign it. <laughs> I'm really uh, glad I don't have to read all of this. <laughs> I, I had I, Judy I, practice I it like three times before yeah. so she can uh, read it out nicely. I did the same thing with my wife and daughter. They hate me. They're like, we don't want <laughs> to hear these jokes anymore. <laughs> oh, who got us? Good. Wow. Well, all right. So, <laughs> Kaylin, decide who's going to read it. And then, <laughs> so we don't have to. We do it in order, a paragraph each, and just exactly put them in order. around Robin. It'll be more like, entertaining that way. I didn't have a printer Kevin. and actually actually drew it myself <laughs> because I couldn't print it out. <laughs> it comes from Kevin. Nobody oh, well, done. Well done, Kevin. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah, we've been so good. I'm so mad. <laughs> oh my god, he's out saving the world, and we're over here, you know. Printing I can't believe I didn't assume that that's what it's he was now. doing this whole time. <laughs> so, and I, I was wondering why he was asking me, and I thought, well, there <laughs> any anyone who's a native would, would be me. better to read it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. I can go. Um. Yeah, the round robin read a line for everyone. We could do that. Um, <laughs> Rachel, you have not seen this at least. He left you out of the show. I've seen it. <laughs> Don't show her. I haven't seen it. You can uh, wait, share your Wait for us to get to there. <laughs> yes. Well, we can, since all of you have practiced, we can do a round robin readout if you would, if you would love to do that. <laughs> we can. I, I didn't read it because I, I said I'm at work and so I couldn't um, join. So I oh, can't nice. do his fun. So maybe George. I'm the only one who's not busted. Yeah, George oh, set up God. personal boundaries very well. That's nice. I thought it'd be a way visiting, but I've not got one. I told him I might not be here, so he didn't send me one. <laughs> I just don't open Kevin's messages. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm also feeling conspicuously left out, but I think it's because I'm so unreliable. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so uh, Kevin did prepare us all, Rachel, since he was uh, in tandem carving these spoons with you. He was a little bit heartbroken to be left out. So um, 
There is a 29.9 reveal speech for Kevin Holler that has been drafted and prepared. So, um, I got the right Baltimore accent or Baltimore accent. I tried. He sent me a very bad Christmas song about crabs to help me with the accent. <laughs> but I can't get get rid of this Midwest old. <laughs> But uh, Judy, Oren, do you guys want to, since you practice this, kick it off? What, just to do a line? Just, just a paragraph? Just here, a paragraph. Up, yeah. up to here, this one's short. Okay. I have prepared a statement to read from Kevin, but he first requests we switch to gallery view. Switch to gallery view. It is with deepest regret that I cannot attend the reveal for the Rise Up and Carve Spoon Challenge number 29. I'm at an, an event becoming a certified tree keeper, an organization that stewards Baltimore's trees. Please don't feel like I am sitting atop a high horse judging you all for how you're spending your Saturday while I'm out literally saving the world as that is not my intention, even though I would be justified if it were. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Uh, Sue, Suzanne, do you, wanna, do you wanna take part of the next paragraph? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Uh, your handwritten notice. <laughs> I, I wrote the dimensions down as, as cheeseburgers and freedom eagles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. OK. Um, I wanted to celebrate Rachel's contribution to the community and our collective appreciation for the demos she made with which I was fortunate enough to be involved. In editing the second demo, I was privileged enough to watch it dozens and dozens and dozens of times and noticed a sad occurrence that I wanted to rectify today. While explaining how to draw the bowl shape, Rachel mentions that the, the one shape that wouldn't fit in her template was a pointy white bowl spoon, <laughs> brackets, Pause while shocked gasps from the audience die down. <gasps> it's closed. If you listen with a careful ear, you can clearly hear deep regret in her voice. Today, I've helped her write that wrong by creating an X template for Rachel that will facilitate the creation of exactly that type of spoon. Brackets show the temple, which you've previously printed out. <laughs> Much wider. <laughs> Good. And this has changed the widest point, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, this is my gift to you, Rachel, and indeed to the world. Brackets, pause while thunderous applause dies down. <laughs> uh, Mazi, can you take it from there? Do the next two. Oh, you're muted. Oh, you're mute. You're mute, Mazi. Yeah, about that. Uh, I made eight drafts of this template before getting it right. So I have named this template the Ruax Spoon Challenge 29.9. This unique one of a kind template will henceforth belong to Rachel and I leave it entirely up to her if she wants to share it with the world. And in this, in this way become forever associated with spoons that have Beautiful, beautifully wide bowls and clever points. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take this. So Rachel, I'm addressing you here. Would you like to share this template with the world? You get the choice. Is that a yes or no answer? Correct. <laughs> if I had one here, I would be lighting a match underneath it. <laughs> I think that's a no. <laughs> So, um, in the event Rachel says no, read this response. Oh, no. I was instructed to read this response in the event that Rachel says no. Fear not, everyone. <laughs> Rachel's small minded jealousy may have driven her to deny the world access to this gift. But I, Kevin Holler, have created a slightly modified version that I would, of course, share. Uh, pause for spontaneous collection of expression of gratitude. You are all welcome. You are most welcome, Rachel, and you'll thank me later. Cheers, Kevin Holler, uh, Sloyd, Capital of the World, uh, Great Challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> you need to read the if she said yes, he said. Oh, no, yeah. we're, not, not, we're not saying yes. No, 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 saying yes. Not. Um, well done, Kevin, because I'm sure you will be watching this afterwards. And for anyone who did not receive that, Kevin Holler was not able to join the call today, had to bring in his shenanigans, and now we can get started with the Rise of Spoon <laughs> template 29. The correct one. Yes, the correct one. And Rachel, I'd love to have you say a few words about your template before we get started. So I'm going to do speaker view and I am going to take a moment to spot. I also think we should burn a number nine just so that we get our revenge. I can take care of that. Just now live on, you've got one there. I've got one. Okay, get everything set up. And when we come to you, you can have a, on, a spotlighted burning. <laughs> okay well it's been really it's been really fun over the last few weeks to both spend a lot of time um recording my process but then also watching it back so many damn times as as um kevin edited it um it was fascinating to see how what i thought at first was about a template that allowed me to grow and change my standard spoon shape became about a process. Um, and so I thought I was helping people to, to sort of do what I felt that I'd learned, which was keep on practicing um, drawing bowl shapes and hopefully get better at it. Um, but actually what I think um, I've learned is that having a set process uh, for me is the is the biggest thing that helps my consistency uh, and because I carve spoons and sell them consistency is important to me and I know that it's not important to everybody and that's okay but it has been really really good fun to see the different shapes not the square ones I haven't enjoyed them and um, the different shapes that um, we've, we've seen coming out and uh, different people's take on on within the constraints of my proportions so yeah let's see them come that's amazing. Thank you again, Rachel, for the generosity of doing the different demos, um, the axing demo, and then the, the um, kind of step-by-step -step carving one. Both were extremely helpful, and I've heard from a lot of people some really good feedback yeah. on just at, at the risk of, Yeah. At the risk of, you know, bigging up Kevin too much, too much, <laughs> even more. Uh, he spent an awful lot of time editing that video. I mean, hours. <laughs> Um, days probably, uh, and it was it was really really appreciated the amount of time he, he spent to get that to get that cut in, and uh, and obviously he enjoyed it too. Yes. But it was it was really appreciated that he did it. So thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I, I joked with him multiple times. I was like, don't you think it would just be easier to carve another spoon with Rachel than to edit the recording? <laughs> but he seemed quite happy. And if anyone has not seen the um, recorded version the first five minutes have some great jokes and some some good uh editing additions into that so those are both up on the rise up youtube channel um accessible there and then they're featured on instagram stories uh, or or a couple of posts that chuck put up so i'm gonna hop back into gallery view and we can start with the show and tell so if someone wants and i've got two pages here so you'll have to raise your hand and kind of wave it as I'm sorting through. But if someone wants to raise their hand for who would like to go first? We got Oren. I'm gonna spotlight you, Oren. Excellent, you can take yourself off mute. Hey, yeah, I just don't know what time I'll have to go. So I'd like to make sure I'm, I'm on at some point. So I'll start. Um, so uh, what can I say? I really enjoyed it. I know I say that about every template and I really do enjoy all of them. Um, this is a little closer to maybe the kinds of spoons I make, uh, more delicate uh, eating spoon, but it does have a lot of different nuances that I usually don't do in my spoons. I know that there were a few different options of, uh, of how to attack this general area and things like that, but when you, whoever here is privileged enough to own one of Rachel's spoons. You can look up close and see so many perfect details. Um, 
the closest thing I've seen to spoons like this is, is Barnes eating spoons, which have these very precise little delicate cuts that run from one side to the other that are just a, a little different than I'm used to. And they're, they're, they're so elegant and, and correct. Um, so for me, uh, I first I, I did like I usually do, I take the template and I just do my spoon on that template, um, which is which is what I did in, in this one. This is in pistachio. Um, I don't recommend for anybody to, to use this wood. It's terrible wood. It's really, really hard and um, it's beautiful, but it's, you can't see it in this, but it is, it is gorgeous, but it's really, really tough. Um, and then I said to myself, why my this, the whole point of this is, is, is to try something, something different. So I went ahead and did all the little details like she does. I couldn't bring myself to thin down, to not thin down this area. Uh, I, I just, I just couldn't. Maybe, maybe I'll do a couple of rounds later again, and maybe one day I'll, I'll manage it. But other than that, I tried to stick to, to an original Rachel spoon as much as I could. This is in um, plum generously given to me by uh, uh, George. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I ruined the color by putting in baking soda. So it's not nice and pink. It's uh, dark and uh, brown. Sorry, George. <laughs> um, but uh, that's it. I really, I really enjoy it. I think I'm gonna make a few more of, uh, of this if that's okay, Rachel. That's absolutely okay. Yeah, what I loved about that was seeing the wood that was very reminiscent of George. Um, and then combined with, you know, how that plum's handled with the, the sapwood coming out at the tip and at the hump and round the, round the bowl. It was just, that was just, just lovely to see. And then of course, a snail going up the side. It was a weird, like, mishmash <laughs> of <laughs> so yeah, many yeah. different influences. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, that's Thank beautiful, you. Oren. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, heading back to gallery view, who would like to go next? Raise a hand. Anyone? Oh, Jody. Thank you. All right, we've got Jody, you are in the spotlight. Right. Um, I really like doing this, and I think I had um, in my post that I made yesterday. Um, made a list of some of the tips that Rachel had given during the um, demos. And I think I'll probably remember a lot of those um, for a long time for like a number of spoons that I can apply these to. And I one actually, it was about a year ago, maybe to the day that I received um, I bought a spoon from Rachel when I first started carving. And um, so I've had one of these. I don't think, Rachel, I think the design has changed a little bit, but I, I love this one and it's a family favorite. And the one that I had gotten from you was apple. And I wanted to also try one in apple. So the one that I um, ended up with was the, another piece of my grandmother's apple tree. And I think that it came out really nicely. Of course, the apple wood is, it was well behaved. And um, I left a little of the, I don't know if you can see it, of the dark tip on the end. Sorry, the light's not super great, but it's, so it's black on the, from being on the edge of the log. And um, it's nice and thin. Um, I really, beautiful. it was really fun. Um, I have another one here made out of cherry that I haven't finished yet. It's just needs some finishing cuts and um, some oil. But so this was another one, a little bit different around, but using the same axing template. And thank you so much for taking the time to make that um, the template and also doing the demo because I think it's. <coughs> It's going to be really helpful, I think, to a lot of carvers that I wish that I had seen it months ago, but <laughs> I think that it's going to be a really great resource. So thank you. Thanks. But you did you did a good job with that apple. That's that's just a neat spoon. Thanks. Yeah. My daughter said that um, she thinks this 
is my best bone so far. So coming from a teenager, that is coming coming from a family member. That's how you yeah. Find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I praise. And the inside of your bowl, you got some beautiful cuts on that, Jody. That is that is stellar and well-behaved apple. I don't think I've met that wood yet. So now, you know, everything's relative, but <laughs> as far as apple goes, it was well behaved. That's awesome. No surprises. Cool. Thank you. All right. Back to the group. Uh raise a hand for who is looking to go next. All right, Ian, you are on the spotlight. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Unmute. There you there go. You go. <laughs> too late in the hey. day from handle technology. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, it's no, too late no. in the day. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Bring back coal. Uh, yeah, I did did the first one. I just sort of followed the template, but I put my own spin in it with a bit of chip carving and cold rosing. Just a bit of boring uh, alder, but it's so easy to carve, I couldn't resist it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the first one. I also own one of Rachel's spoons, and it's the first I was saying to her on one of the rise ups in the morning. I'd never actually looked at it that closely. Uh, and then I suddenly realized what the kind of things that Auden was going on about all these tiny wee facet. So I started doing another one, trying to stick slightly closer to, to what uh, Rachel does, primarily to try and test out one of our members called Chris, who goes on about your spoons all the time, Rachel. John will verify this. Uh, I had to actually give him the, my, my uh, Rachel spoon for a month so we can have a good look at it. So we're going to try and do a blind, a blind tasting exactly. in January's meeting. And see if you can tell the difference. <laughs> see what happens. But no, I really enjoyed doing this one. Uh, again, one or two interesting little techniques which I'll definitely take up and start using. Uh, I do like this flat, flat piece here, and and this nice bit here at the base of the bow. It's, it's so fast to do. It's so fast, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, I can see what because you can almost just about. Get, almost one continuous cut from yeah. the back to the front just about rather than turn the ball around a spoon around yeah so uh, yeah. i can see why you do it uh, yeah. and it does make it a lot easier so yeah and i think it looks Something good easier. too not just is it fast yeah it just <laughs> simplifies it completely it's, it's really nice uh, i still don't know how you get such a smooth finish no. but uh sandpaper who said that <laughs> No, I'm only really kidding, I'm only really kidding. No, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was brilliant, really, really good. I really enjoyed your post where you had to have like a um, separate spoon to really get all the creative decoration out. You, you, you don't know how hard. I actually quite enjoy <laughs> chip carving now. I used to hate chip carving. So I had to literally go crazy on this. This is a really old spoon of mine. Uh, one of my original eating spoons, uh, which I use myself. So I just, I've been doing it off and on for probably about a year. Uh, so I finished it one night while I was on Rise Up with Sean Tillett because I, I really wanted to put some cold rosing on this spoon, but I thought, no, Ian, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> Not until after January, then you can then you can do it to your heart's content. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. That's right, that's what, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, no, thank you, Rachel. It was really good. I haven't watched the, the second video yet, so I will get around to that. Uh, the first one, was, first one was just too funny, so I, I, I'd imagine the second one's pretty good as well. So, uh, no, thank you. Well. <laughs> okay, thank you. I love the cull rosing on that first one. I, you shouldn't, I know why you held, held your chip, chipping, chipping and stuff back on the second yeah. one. But, uh, you know, that's, that's so much part of, of your style, and I love the organic nature of it. So I look forward to seeing the other spoon with it on after you've dealt with John. Oh, whoever it was, Chris. Chris, Chris. Chris yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ian. That was that was fantastic. All right. Who would like to go next? Okay, Jurgen. And then we've got Andreas. So Jurgen will get you spotlighted first. You can unmute yourself. Perfect. Good. Yeah, the um, 
doing that template and you guys doing making that template was was very helpful. I also had a um, a couple friends, both on different days, um, show up during the period, and actually they uh, I walked them through the whole how to uh, carve a spoon, and we used that template. So I got my blanks, <coughs> basically that form, when I was able to uh, work with two individuals, and then I can point them to the to the videos you guys did. It was. Um, very useful and um yeah it was i i definitely enjoyed it. and it's also entertaining too so you know at least they're not too bored watching these uh, videos so. <laughs> and, and it gives them a taste of what the, what's on the rise up too so which which is very good um so the first well, we one i look forward to seeing them soon yeah i hope so <laughs> yeah um so did this this was the first one i ended up doing with yeah. With them. What wood was that again? The, all three of them are going to be their cherry, basically. Mm -hmm. So I had a cherry log there I was able to to use. Yeah. That, that's a first one. I, yeah, a little different out on the back side of it. And then. Really interesting uh, facets on the back there, back of the bowl. Yeah. I, and then. So, and then I did this one. This is another one we did. Mm -hmm. And I, this one's a little more rounded out with the. Yeah, the top of the handle's nicely rounded. Yeah, a little more faceted across the top. Um, yeah. And then, and then I did a third one. This one here through. Yeah, I like that that detail around the base of the handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like the fact that we can all put our own just fingerprints on it within the yeah, same I mean, in the same template. But it's it's also you have, you know, there's no consistency between my three spoons. Well, but, there is. You put them side by side, and they'll be consistent because they're the same length and the same bowl size. Yeah, but I mean, it, you're. You can still use that space to to create what you want. Yeah. You can still create sort of a. I guess you can go even more with doing different things with the handle, even the balls shapes. You know, one of you know one's a little more square. You know, mm -hmm. this one is here. You know, this one's a little more rounded. So, even within that that space, um, you can create different shapes. Mm -hmm obviously but yeah it was nice i enjoyed it thank you great and great to hear of your experience you know walking it through with with it with a couple of a couple of new people that's good yeah really good feedback well thank you again those are excellent little details i think um like rachel said everyone can add their own kind of flair to this shape and i really like those those are very elegant well, all right, Andreas, you are up next. If you're still ready to share, you are spotlit. There you go. <laughs> Hello, you all. Uh, yeah, I um, I made four. This is three, but the other one is still upstairs. I made it yesterday evening, but um, yeah, I didn't finish it because we had a, a birthday of more to 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 do. Um, so yeah, this is, I believe this is the first one that I made, uh, it's cherry. And what I always find is I, I try to get the, like what Rachel said, like get the straightest part of the, um, what's it called the this in, 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 in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, which I filled on. And if you see that it's here it's this this part is wider than this part so well it's pretty pretty okay but it still looks a bit wonky um i find that quite hard to actually get a uh, get a decent shape but it worked pretty well i i used the uh the method to get in the middle and then uh with a, a protractor to get it uh, on both sides the same mm -hmm. And yesterday, I don't know if you can see that. Yesterday, Don was online and he taught me about the 
um, the rim that if you have a knife and you put it on a certain angle, that it's actually just like a continuous straight line across the rim of the bowl, even though it's rounded off, which I never, never even thought about using that. But yesterday I finished this one off a bit. Yeah, a bit. And um, yeah, so that's that's one. Then I got another one. This one doesn't have the uh, end whip. It just goes down mm -hmm. like this. This one does. As you can see, it has a bit of a um, same thing here. Um, this is so this is um, perpendicular to the uh, to the to the log. And this is I don't know what this is, but it uh, bark bark outside. I don't know. Um, yeah, ten, this, tangential, but, but yeah, upside down. Yeah. So this is uh, this is also cherry. This one is cherry. And then I I got a nice log of oak and the um, a log, well, a piece of oak. And it was two months old before I uh, put my axe in it. And what I remember from my grandmother is that she had old chairs with on the top that like uh, there was a bump. Perhaps you have seen that before. But so I tried that on. Uh, on 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 to make to make it look like the chairs of my grandmother, and then I made this one. Um, yeah, and this is like quite quite yeah. the um, quite thin at the tip. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's really 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 thin. And whoever whoever sent ever uh, gives me his address and. Um, uh do a spoon swap with me i'm gonna send you this this is like a led light and you can put it behind the uh the bowl it's okay. exactly the right size and then you can look through it and see where you got thicker parts so that's a promise that's a <laughs> it was a very very nice a very nice template. Thank you very much. Yeah. And oh, uh, the, 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 the video was sublime. <laughs> so, and very delicate too, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> I think you can't, you. you can't talk delicate now that you're shining lights through your spoons. <laughs> well, that's, well, now I can say that. Yeah. Indeed. So, but thank you very much. It was uh, oh, thank you. good, good uh, doing this. And now I'm gonna kill my cat. Yeah, he's noisy. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't have known that last one was oak. It's really <laughs> pale. I can. Uh, well, if you want to want to uh, do a spoon swap. Yeah, you'd send me the light too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll get one of these lights. <laughs> and the best part of it is that you can actually recharge it. So it's amazing. Yeah, and clip it to your whatever. Yeah, exactly. Very or cool. pencil, even. Like, if you don't know, see, you can put the put you put it on your. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thank you so much, Andreas. Yeah. Okay. I think I've seen Florian. Is your hand early? Yep, raised. Perfect. Okay, let me spotlight you. Okay, you are. Hello. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? <laughs> I have been missing in action for a while. Uh, we just moved house, so everything is still in chaos, and I haven't actually carved spoon in a long time. And I haven't done the template, to be honest, but uh, uh, a million years ago, I bought a spoon from Rachel. And after I got it, I was so amazed by the spoon that I straight away, it was also like a million years ago, carved a copy of that spoon. Well, not direct copy, because I made a round uh, bowl. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Right back then, and if I can find my camera, so this one was spalted birch, mm -hmm. a birch log that I found on the side of the road in the gutters, and I rescued <laughs> it. And this, or oh, this spoon, actually, um, 
it has, uh, because I really like the shape in general, but I had carved one spoon where the, the neck broke. And mm -hmm. as a consequence, I stopped carving the neck too soon. And that's how actually my now template emerged because I just kept uh, a big swoop of the, the handle there. Okay. And if you, if you look at it, um, so oh, I that's really interesting. The, yeah, I just left the neck thick, and that's how my template actually, uh, or my own personal template for spoons, how that emerged. So Rachel, you're responsible. It's your fault. <laughs> that's um, really interesting. Though, it? And more recently, I have started <clears throat> to do straight handle, mm. um, so they're not swoopy as the other one is. But yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Um, Thank you, Rachel. Even though I haven't done this template, you have inspired my uh, my spoon carving very much. And you were there before everybody else doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Flory. That's um, a really cruel, cool way of like adapting a design and then completely changing it into a new form, but still has that kind of echo and element of it, Florian. I, I think that's really cool. But thank you for sharing it. I, I, when I was a newer carver as well, that was one of the first things I did is if you bought a spoon, you try to replicate it and it's a good practicing technique. Um, I learned so much more when Rachel actually had an opportunity to teach us how to carve. <laughs> so I think that's always wonderful to get that as well, but that replication to learn is a, a really cool process. Okay, I am back in the gallery. Anyone raise a hand for who'd like to go next? Kate? Okay, I'm gonna spotlight you quickly. All right. Oh, let me. Oh. Second. There you go. All right, Kate, you're ready. Hey, everybody. Um, so this was my first Rise Up and Carve template. So I um, tried to stick, I watched the video and the um, two videos, and they were great. Um, I really enjoyed the humor. But I also enjoyed the meticulous instruction. Um, and I tried to follow it. Ignored. What? It was mostly ignored. <laughs> by me? No, by, by Kevin. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, I enjoyed the tension between you two, the sort of teacher, student, or however you want to phrase that. Um, I enjoyed there was a little bit of tension there in terms of his ability to follow directions. Um, but yeah, that made it all the more entertaining. Um, but my spoon is uh, birch, which is a black birch that it's a little harder than the white birch. And um, it, I think it came out too thin, but I was like trying to do a Rachel spoon. So it came out quite thin. And then it's got this kind of like, t I think I stuck to the like wider thing area here, but there's a reason it got a little um, teardroppy, <laughs> which was not my intention. It's just that I, I think I gouged in, I went the wrong way here. Yeah. And maybe that's happened to other people, like you forget. And then I went the wrong way, gouged into the this like necky bit, shoulder bit, and just like went with it and decided <laughs> to make a teardrop because I had come so far with the Rachel spoon that I was not going to settle for um, a scrap, you know. So and then I wasn't getting too crazy with my own creative energies, but I, I did give it a little like sort of reverse curve on the end, that little yeah. bit. But yeah, no, I mean, it swoops up a little bit here. I don't usually do that. It's very subtle. Um, sorry, I don't know if I'm like holding it, but anyway, it got too thin. I mean, it's okay. Like it's, it's definitely like a usable spoon, but it weighs like nothing. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. It can be like that, yeah. yeah it's it, so it just crazy. Like, I feel like it could get blown away by the wind, you know? 
but I'm kind of enjoying that about it. Like, I'm like, okay, you know, like, like everyone is different. This one is like the feather light spoon. Any critiques, Rachel? I think your point about making it teardroppy is, is an easy trap to fall into. And it's exactly that, that you forget that it's, you're carving the wrong way and suddenly you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong place with your knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And it's one of the things I find that doing doing the same shape all the time with my bowls it means I sort of don't I don't fall into that trap but I do find that if I yeah. if I cut yeah. different shapes with templates I can do exactly the same thing because I'm not you know I'm, I'm carving the wrong shape with the right method and it all goes all goes pear shaped so yeah it's not it's not uncommon and we all make that mistake yeah <laughs> and you just go with it I tried I'm trying a new one that I I banged out very quickly afterwards. And I, I'm trying to give it a little more heft, you know? Um, I think it is, it's definitely like the, it's not as thin here, um, but yeah, you know, it's, I don't love this shape, but I'm just kind of learning. So there's yeah. that. That's what it's about, it's great. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for the template. Oh, yeah, and I'm so ready. Thank you for committing three hours of your life to watch the videos. <laughs> yeah, <it> was... <laughs> yeah, this is long. Yeah. <laughs> We're so excited to have you, Kate, and um, welcome to the templates. That's that's awesome. And it's that's a right. very Thank you elegant. for reminding me first. That's yeah. just marvelous. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Kate uh, Massey. Hey, hey, all right, I'll stop to you. There you go. Uh, you're still on right. mute. Am I still, am I muted? Oh, you're back. My Wi-Fi had to sneak outside to the shop because so my Wi-Fi is kind of spotty, but I had to go after the other Kate. I thought that would be good because shout out to Kate. Woo -woo. <laughs> also, because this is being recorded, I always have to say that it's like six, am here and i'm not a morning person <laughs> also i want to give a little shout out to this other template i don't know if you've seen it or not uh we have yeah, we have. yeah. <laughs> anyways um i carved my my spoon um and uh I appreciate what Oren said because I tend to like carve this back part lower, but I kept it for Rachel's sake. But um, this is maple. I did make it like somewhat asymmetrical, which is not very Rachel. And I added this finial, which isn't necessarily like my deal. I don't, I'm not like, I'm, I'm just like, I don't know, whatever with finials, but this spoon was like, can you carve a finial on me? So I did. And it's like a rough one. So anyway, it's kind of cute. I like it, but um, I really appreciate the thought that goes into Rachel's spoons um, and the intentionality. Um, so anyway, I don't know <laughs> what else to say, but I enjoy carving, uh, I enjoy trying to mimic Rachel's spoons because it only makes me a better carver. So, and I I have one of hers that I tried to mimic, but I didn't try too hard because I didn't want to fail too hard. <laughs> but no, but I mean, it's important making this edge of the bowl a little, you know, more thin than maybe one would or, um, something like that so anyway i don't know that's all i have i just want you to know that that look i've done one with a an asymmetric point as well can you see oh, yep i see it that's nice you can almost smash yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but that that maple is just glorious and the the, the yeah. bowl i i love the look of that bowl just something about the, the grain in it and the shape is everything it's lovely yeah, yeah I was awesome. given gifted this wood um, by someone uh, nearby, and it was it was, it was nice. Um, I've been 
I'm sure I'll be posting more spoons with it because it's really beautiful. So anyway, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. And did you see I've given you some homework to do? Oh, yes, I did see that. And now I have that Cindy Lauper song in my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. That's beautiful. That grain is incredible. It's always neat to get like a little unique, unique coloring in the bowl. Okay, uh, raise a hand for who'd like to go next. All right, John in Scotland. Let me spotlight you here quickly. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> Adam, we got the template to the first, well, the second one I did, it was before I watched the video and try to get it symmetrical was after the fact was a bit of a bugger, but anyway, it's not too bad. But then I made, after watching the video, using the measuring, I managed to get one that's a bit more symmetrical. And uh, it's a little rounder, but it's still like not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting thinner, but it's still, I think it's scared to break it if I go too far. <laughs> The first one I did, I don't get met with approval for some reason. It's <laughs> you know, what's wrong with it? <laughs> so it's because it's identical to the, the template. But so after that, the criticism was it was a it wouldn't fit in a round bowl. So we made a square bowl. So it fits <laughs> perfectly. perfectly. That's amazing. <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> exactly, exactly. There's no problem in this at all. He says, but I actually quite like it's a bit of me that one is a joke because I've got the rings perfectly central. You've got it exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's actually in, in the shape. So I've started the other one and uh, these are all <laughs> cherry because I died another one in birch. Because <laughs> you just like it so much. <laughs> I do, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, it's still on its way. It's a bit thick yet. Yeah. It's getting there. So, but no, It'll be known like, as, as the Rachel spoon that Rachel's never made. Yeah, distinctly Rachel, but not her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the, it's the bear bear in mind, is. Rachel. Bear in mind, Rachel. This could replace a number nine. This square spoon. <laughs> that, that must be a She's good thing. Be pushing for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New template into a square. Yeah. But no, the video was very good. I like the the little naughty school boy and the teacher um, vibe between the two of you and. And a uh, Kaylin's Norden's oh, doing in history now, so <laughs> yeah, just like that. But no, I quite enjoyed doing that, even though it's completely different to what I normally do. So it was quite a good one. So, do you normally use templates all the time? So, would you normally just draw around something? Yeah, all the time. It says all the time. first one I say, I just drew it freehand, and then it's not to watch your video and realize that if you start measuring it, it does go kind of a bit more symmetrical. It says because, yeah. because the it was bark up and the ring are off it's actually it is really almost symmetrical but because it's, uh, it just, uh, it's yeah. offset it throws your eye throws away your face, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. so measuring it it's not too bad so but no I'm saying, yeah but some but, people some people can just draw symmetrical bowls without measuring it's just not a skill that i've ever got no not me either mine end up just well they even look weirdly symmetrical but not in a good way <laughs> yeah, not like Dan. <laughs> no. Yeah, but no, I think I'll actually keep the square one, so I'm afraid it's, it's here for good. Yeah. <laughs> That's metaphor. <laughs> I, um, I, I have the special ability to draw a symmetrical bowl and then carve it and for it to always be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you can draw it symmetrical and it goes off, whereas I just can't draw it symmetrical in the first place. Yeah, yeah I, can draw, I can draw it perfectly symmetrical freehand if I chose to, but it doesn't mean that it's going to, it's going to turn out that way. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to be really careful when I was carving mine because Rachel said to split the line, split the pencil line, it'll be perfect. <laughs> that just <laughs> never happened for me. <laughs> um, but John, I really like your commitment to the um, shading of the, here's where you can put the depth of the bowl. Here's the... <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was good good addition to that commitment it was pretty funny and the square bowl is revolutionary yeah. maybe you know maybe we'll all be carving square bowls it's, no i don't you won't because chopping through the end grain was a nightmare and it's a bit of, 
caught in Sycamore and it was bursting out on me. I thought, no, I'll definitely not be doing that again. <laughs> it's a unique I one. It's the only commitment. one. <laughs> no, it should be committed. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Okay. Um, raise a hand for who would like to go next. All right, John and then Craig. So we'll get John here. All right, you are on the spotlight, John. So um, every once in a while, we'll see that square spoon come up and you can just see it kind of trigger Rachel, like, oh my gosh. And <laughs> in, in terms of triggering, I, I, in terms of triggering, like I carved with Craig a lot late at night and instead of saying Celtic, I'll say Celtic again. I could just... I just triggers like Craig. It, he, he's the nicest guy in the world. I can make him so angry, like, like say it three times in a row, and I don't do it on purpose. And I'm uh, sorry. So here's the spoon. Um, this is black acacia. Um, let me turn my light on. lovely yeah the the grain i don't know about I, the grain went back and forth with me all the time you can see it's a little bit rough but we got through it um really like this swoop like this part through here is probably the favorite part for me the favorite part of the spoon um so many things you you can get out of um her two videos um the thing that just keeps coming to my mind is i started the second one and you get to a point where the handle is like a block like it's like a piece of marble right here and you're like okay here's where the swoop comes from um th this is like like you're planning ahead and this is this is kind of where the the tire hits the road this is, this is my favorite when you get to this point you know you've pretty much got up to the right point so and then like she said when she's talking like this is my favorite part this is my favorite part i'm doing the handle like it's true like you've got this like little canvas that you can work from so learned a lot of stuff about um uh 29 but um that's that's kind of what's sticking out in my mind so far so it's, it's awesome rachel thanks oh it's a pleasure but I think I think there is a, a that's that stage of the spoon where I've got it down to the the pencil line on the second drawing, but it's still all rectangular. That's just my favorite point because you know yeah, that, that you've rectangle, done the hard, right? Done the hard work, and now it's just going to be from now on in. And, I, and several people I've talked to like, and then watch Rachel drag that knife across the handle and those long, straight, single curls that like. When we get to that point, then you know you've got it because that's just awesome to watch. You just go, and there's five of them sticking up at five curls. It's that's my favorite part of those videos. It's the favorite part of doing it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, oh, you did a cracking job there, John. And and I like that handle just sort of appearing for you. Um, yeah, you know, it was good. Good to see. Yeah, that's absolutely lovely wood and the handle, just that delicate little swoop, John, really, really nicely done. It's so cool. I really like it. This right now, I think this is my favorite spoon, but I probably say that after every spoon, but I, <laughs> I am definitely going to be using this one in the kitchen. Cool, cool. All right, Craig, we'll get you on the spotlight. Uh, All right, you're up. Celtic, Celtic, hey. Celtic, Celtic. <laughs> oh, I'm going to Denver. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I've had my first Rachel spin back in 2019 when I first met her. And I really lovely wee spins, uh, and she's developed quite a bit since. Uh, so it was good to get onto one of her templates eventually. That was my first attempt here. No, as I can It was already, a, I didn't have a crank in this. It was a blank I had in the, the fridge and it didn't have a crank on it, so I just developed what I could out of it. But used the process that Rachel does for carving it. The end split, so I ended up with a wee teaspoon with a nice, delicate handle. 
Sorry, it's not delicate. <laughs> Great spot. Uh, and then second one. Elegant. Repeat. And again, the bold split one, mate, and I had to cut it down a bit and made that a bit asymmetric. And there's oh. I've got a bit more into that one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bit of a red, pinky tinge to it. Oh, Something to do yeah. with the fungus that was on the, the tree, yeah. I was told. I love those yeah, bowl shapes. I know they were accidental, but I like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of went for that off centre. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But no, the process was what I was more into with Rachel's spin. I like the way she was about processing down the spin. Methodical. Nice. And cheers, Rachel. Thanks. Nice doing yeah. it. It's great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for, for persevering even when the wood just wouldn't wouldn't cooperate. <laughs> no, there was two others that just went in the fire. I was sweating all the time. Rachel spoon, isn't it, if they go in the fire? <laughs> cheers. Yeah, sometimes the wood gets to decide the shape it wants to be in at a spoon. Um, and I think you did a really, really beautiful job with those, Craig. That's that's fantastic. And little teaspoons are fun, like having little little stirring spoons, I think. Yeah, I like a teaspoon, especially with the long handles on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like them. Okay, perfect. Um, raise a hand if you'd like to go next. Great, Brad, and then Mozzie. Right, Brad, you are, you're up. Groovy, groovy. So um, I didn't, I've been, as you can tell, yeah. out of these, for the last three challenges, I've been um, on the sidelines. And um, so I actually, there's a concept in wood turning that um, if you don't want to make copies of someone else's work and have them upset with you, you kind of look at their work and you look at the photos and then you go off and make something inspired by that. And then you have your own little twist on it. And so I, I didn't print out the template. I looked at the template and I watched the video. And then I went down to the shop to get some firewood. And I saw that there was this little stick of maple. And I, I don't know why I didn't carve it when it was fresh, but it had been sitting around for a year and a half. And I thought, well, let me just see if I can make a small sized one. And um, so what I did was I flattened out the billet and then, um, and then I um, drew the, I drew, hand drew, you know, a line and a, and a square, and I axed that out. And in, and in Rachel fashion, that was the best axing I'd ever done. I, you know, after I made my, my cut, I stuck my axe on there and I tapped it. Now, of course, I got to do all this pretty much one-handed. I can, I can sort of use my fingers, but I really can't pull with my left shoulder yet. So I set the axe on there and I tapped it and it split the line. <laughs> Bingo! So it was a very straight piece of red maple, and but it had very little depth. So I made this this spoon, and at first I thought, oh, this will be a cute little 29.1. You know, this will be a two-thirds scale version inspired by Rachel's template. So um, I never, once I axed it out, I never went back and drew a line on here. I never measured anything. I I took a, a piece of wood, and then I um, I carved one side, and then I just did the stupid technique of carving and holding it up to the window and trying to make it look the same. And so the result I end up with is this cute little spoon that um, isn't, it, it has a funny thing and I, I'll hold it against my dark shirt maybe. It looks slightly bigger on one side when you look at the back and it looks slightly bigger on the other side when you look at the front. So this is the, the important lesson here is that if you're going for a precise outcome, you really ought to have a precise um, sequence of events like Rachel does to very carefully. Oh no, the... no! Actually, when you when you say that, Brad, mine often look bigger on one side and the other from the oh. front and differently from the back. So you've done a really, really good copy of my spoon. <laughs> yeah, and and so you know, I was very impressed with your process of drawing the center line and then you draw one curve and then actually measure and put dots. I've never seen anybody do that. So I just sort of by dead reckoning, which is a sailing term, which pretty much means dying on the rocks um you know you <laughs> dead reckoning uh, uh not not using careful compass points but i um so i did the best i could and i had very little depth there's actually still a little bit of a little bit of bark on the edge there and this one is pith up yeah. and i don't normally work pith up so i got a little tiny bit of swoop here a little too close to the pith very thin 
but I did concentrate on getting things straight as much as I could. And I can't do any, I can't do any of those pull cuts or chest. I can't do that because I'm one handed pretty much. So it was the best I could manage. And then it turns out I stuck a ruler on this after I had, I was right down to the finishing cuts yesterday and it's bang on the money. It's, it's 45 by 120. Um, and here I thought I was making a two thirds scale, but it's the, it's the right side. Right. It, it's awesome for a one handed spoon. <laughs> I just think that's like, whoa. <laughs> and I, I did do a few, you know, I can use the other hand, but I can't, all I can really do is put it, you know, to, it, these things where you pull against, I can kind of use a finger, but I can't pull very hard. Mm -hmm. But um, I put a few facets on the back because I put facets on the back of everything. And I wish I could get a little more swoop here and a little more, uh, um, what do you call that? Um, crank, overall crank. crank. Yeah. Crank. A little more crank there, but you know, it's it was the piece of wood I had and it sure would have been more fun if I'd carved this piece of wood a year and a half ago, but <laughs> it was really fun. And so when I'm better able, I just started physical therapy this week. And so in a month or so, when I'm when I'm fully two-handed, I want to go back and um, carve a bunch of these because I like, I like, I like the step-by-step-by-step by step by step careful um, measuring and checking. And, you know, what I can see here is that um, I could tweak this a little bit, but by taking a little off one side, but what I ended up with is the shaft of the handle is slightly tilted mm -hmm. to the bowl, mm -hmm. which wouldn't happen if I had followed Rachel's instructions religiously. So that's kind of why it looks bigger on it one side. It certainly wouldn't happen with a dry bit of timber. Yeah. It happens frequently with a, with a green piece of timber. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can't, I can't blame mother nature, it's all me. <laughs> no. So it's, it's one of the reasons you should always carve with green wood because you can always blame blame yeah, the drying right, process for right. any sort of wonkiness. Totally wonky. I do that same thing. <laughs> so now I, I'll uh, I'll let this I'll oil it and let it dry and then I'll start using it. But it's also not I don't have a lot of uh, depth to the bowl, so um that's fine. Um it, I like shallow bowls, but I'll make more of these in the months to come. That's beautiful. Yeah, and well done for for kind of using that adaptive carving and. And getting a really lovely, lovely um, result from it. <laughs> and take care of yourself. Oh, knife in my teeth, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Mazi, are you still ready for following up? Okay, I'm gonna give you the spotlight. And you can take your eye self off mute. Are you match ready? No, you know. So I, I started. I started to have second thoughts here because, uh, you know, I, I was thinking back to a conversation with. Uh, so first off. I was cleaning up the one that I carved last night and the bowl cracked oh, just no. as just after I said I was going to burn it. And I'm going to take that as an omen that Kevin has some sort of like power. And uh, and I happen to know that Kevin doesn't like when people burn spoons. So I'm going to go ahead and not burn the ninth wonder of the world here. Yeah. Um, we're just gonna. It's I'm gonna weird. Be nice. It's weird, Mozzie, because I would have, I would have taken that totally the opposite way. I'd have said, if it's cracked after you said you're gonna burn it, it's saying, yeah, burn me. And <laughs> and if you know that he really doesn't like it, then yeah, that's obviously the right thing to do. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> so I think that describes personalities pretty well. So, <laughs> um, so this this was a fun template. I actually, what's funny is I was watching the videos and um my my daughter was watching her tablet next to me and I was watching the videos and she found you guys so funny that she put down her tablet and watched the videos with me. Ooh. And I think it's hysterical that you held a five-year-old's attention span and she, she calls it Spoon TV and she's watched it three times now. She loves watching this video. So I took that as an opportunity to have her help me with a spoon because We've been practicing draw knife and she's used a hook knife and, a, and you know, she's, she's doing pretty good for five years old. Mm -hmm. So this spoon, um, it, it started out that it just, the wood broke and it, uh, mm -hmm. it ended up being much smaller than anticipated, but I use that as an opportunity to, to work with her on it. So she helped me actually carve this one and it is now her spoon. So she has stayed. That's awesome. Long. That's probably awesome. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's much smaller than, than it was intended to be, but it's got some real nice curves to it and um it's a it's a fun shape and i i think she's gonna love eating her oatmeal with it more importantly thank you because uh to get a five-year-old's attention for like you know hours watching people carve and, and joke around and laugh it was hysterical to watch she was like so she thinks i do have to throw this out there because i know kevin's gonna watch this 
Uh, she does think Kevin is absolutely hysterical, and she called him a clown at one point. Oh. So, so that's pretty fantastic. So, um, yeah. So, thank you. That was this was a fun template. I'm gonna actually carve another one here uh, soon. Uh, I'm I'm recuperating from a hundred fire ant bites this week, so um, no carving this week. So uh, but, uh, that looked really painful. Yeah, it, I don't even pretty... know what a fire ant is, but. Yeah, they're uh, little red ants, I, I and uh, the black walnut that I got was not worth it to get the bites, and then they turned to hives because I had an allergic reaction, so um, no fun. Don't wish it on my worst enemy, so. No. Yeah, but, take care of yourself. Mazi, that's such a sweet connection with your daughter and creating a spoon with her, and the shape's beautiful. Like, it's very sweet. I like... I perfect like, size for little kids. Perfect. I mean, yeah. I have massive hands, so it throws it off too, but it's like the perfect size for her, so um yeah it's it's pretty pretty fun so that's lovely and I think after kind of Mozzie said that I think all of us can agree that we're really hoping that Kevin and Rachel start their own YouTube channel and or <laughs> podcast absolutely <laughs> we would all sign oh up my for watching that <laughs> y'all are absolutely hysterical it just I mean it's just, it's it's so funny yeah, very <laughs> joyful. We put these on Netflix. People might pay money to watch. There you go. Oh man, that could be the, an audience in the five-year-old bracket as well, which is oh. yeah. yeah. I mean, it was pretty children's friendly. That's what I liked. Is that like it was like my wife's like, "Are you sure this is okay for her to watch?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty positive. It's pretty safe. It's yeah, it's pretty yeah. good." So keeping it family friendly. It's it's good. The like Great British Bake Off or the Throwdown. Maybe we could have like Rachel and Kevin Sloyd. Um, that would be that would be great. Oh, it's so funny. There was there was one naughty word from Kevin, but that could be edited out very easily. <laughs> it's nothing she hasn't heard from me. So okay, um, raise a hand if you would like to go next. Okay, Patrice. All right, and one second. Okay, Teresa, you are on. Well, I was very fortunate to have um, two of Rachel's spoons and they're very different. This one has a narrower bowl than this one does. Mm -hmm. This one has this beautiful swoop, which mother nature provided. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rachel? It, uh, <laughs> but left hand right that way. <laughs> so yeah it became a left-handed one so I snatched that right up but yeah so um this is mine in black walnut and it's a piece of black walnut that I got from Michael wooden spoonful and it was the sap wood but I soaked it in baking soda and then it got this beautiful chocolatey brown color and I tried to stay true to Rachel's um, shapes and transitions, but I did mess up here a little bit. And this is a little bit higher than I'd like it to be, but I really liked um, cool. the way it turned out. It's got some really nice little finishing cut line, like marks on the back. That I really like and the wood really accentuates it. Sorry, the light's not great. But um, yeah, I just really like the spoon. And when it's together with the others, I feel like it has yeah, it's a nice little the like oh, yeah, a nice little <laughs> home. Family. Yeah. That's so lovely. and I like the way that they're, they're, it's like um, some sort of three-tone ice cream. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they can live together on on the shelf and then I'll rotate through them but I just really enjoyed carving the spoon and watching the shenanigans and the videos were great I also played it on the big screen tv and my husband was watching it with me the cat was watching it um yeah it was, it was good good fun and it was just nice to be able to carve with Rachel so like when I was working on this I could ask Rachel a question and she could give me some advice, but she's like, oh, watch the video at this point and this point, and, and then you could uh, uh, really get that part down. So uh, I will be watching the video a lot more and 
improving my carving skills um, a lot more because I can already tell the difference since watching those videos and having had these opportunities to carve with Rachel. So thank you so much, Rachel. And um, yeah, it's been fun. And watching watching that gut spoon develop and then change color. So I wish we had a before and after because it's it's so so different. So this yeah. this is the before color. That's crazy. Oh, so and this crazy. is about fifteen minutes of baking soda soak, and it was already this yeah. dark. Yeah, it's wow. amazing. It's, it's only fifteen minutes. Mm. Yep. yep. It, I mean, I was she very did it while we were there. I mean, she was so impatient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's no, super and that's then you can do a side by side tasting you know you can see see how it is in the mouth comparing them too mm -hmm. yeah that'll be probably interesting but I'm sure yours will still be far superior and I'll have a lot to uh, look forward to in my carving <laughs> Great work. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful work, Trace. That color that you got, the richness, it's lovely. It really suits that spoon very, very well. Oh, so pretty. Okay. Um, raise your hand if you would like to go next. All right, Michael Wooden Spoonful. Oh, another link there. Um, yeah, thanks. My Zoom has been crashing constantly, so hopefully. Uh, we'll be able to make this before it crashes again. But um, so Rachel, I apologize. I'm really bad at this. I don't follow instructions well. I spend all day on the computer, so I didn't watch any videos. So <laughs> the only thing I was able to do was say, well, wait a minute, I have two Rachel spoons sitting right here. Mm -hmm. So let me, you know, grab that and I'll just try and make a Rachel spoon. And of course, you know, you know, it's not going to look like a Rachel spoon because I did it. So anyways, so I had some nice, um, so it's actually what we call sycamore maple, which I think you guys just call sycamore, uh, yeah. but uh, it's it's not the London plain kind of stuff. Um, so this one, it's hard to, I mean, you definitely see the contrast there, but um, mm -hmm. so it's got a heartwood, sapwood contrast. Um, and then there's actually some spalting. Uh, you can see it's got a little bit of fleck in it, um, which is actually, you know, some comes from the spalting. And this one, the, the most, most of the small thing, you know, was sort of heaviest up here and, you know, it's sort of because it ends up being softer, I ended up, you know, the bowl didn't quite come out, you know, it sort of ended up carving away a little bit more up there. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you can see that it's uh, proportionally. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You know, but obviously you look at the neck, you know, I did not do a good job carving a Rachel neck did not that did not work out you know sorry I can't like you, know. you didn't really commit to it if I'm honest right yeah so um <laughs> but yeah but, but I'm interested fun. because our sycamore we call sycamore doesn't tend to have a heartwood and a sapwood mm -hmm. it tends to be really consistent right the way through yeah we got we got lucky I mean this is you know big branch that came down the neighborhood and um you know and I've been handing this out all over Seattle to mm -hmm. all the spoon people um beautiful yeah so that's the first one. And then I did another one and, you know, second one. And, you know, this one, it does actually line up really pretty well. I think it's just, there's just a tiny, maybe which way was, I mean, this one, the bowl really comes, it's hard to see, it's hard to see with the light. Sorry about that. Um, and then it's got this crazy craziness on the back. Um, yeah. This one, it, so actually, I would say, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to play around with, you know, to you know, take from your spoons was, you know, getting the neck uh, thin. Um, and, you know, so that that was something I was really trying to you know, like, let's, you know, and, you know, make it thick in this dimension, make it thin in the other dimension. So I did have a lot of fun trying to play around with this. But with this one, it's got that, you know, you've got that hurtwood, you know, running right through the neck there. And with those lines, you know, it was like driving me crazy. It was like, you know, every time I would make it thinner, it's like with the lines there, it's like, no, wait a minute. It's not right. It's, you know, <laughs> it's wrong. So it, this one ended up maybe thinner than I really would have wanted, but um, I still think it's, it's going to be fine. There's plenty of thickness there. Um, so yeah, so there we I did not follow instructions. I apologize. Um, but I had a lot of fun and thanks so much for all your efforts. And I'll really try to go watch the video at some point. Well, particularly after all the recommendations today. 
yeah well that's pretty awesome word you got there yeah um, oh, thanks yeah but but it's it's it makes it so hard to do anything that's symmetrical, doesn't it? When you've got such strong lines drawing your eye. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I, I, I was in on, you know, the Kevin number nine thing. You know, I got that email last night and it was like, I, it's like three pages long. I don't have time to read this. But what I can offer in exchange is, I don't know if you saw one of my posts, there's some in, insanely curly oak that I got. And so what I can do is like carve a number nine template and send it to Kevin and guilt him into making a number nine out of it because it'll take him weeks. I mean, that stuff is so curly, it's going <laughs> to drive him insane. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out there and, you know, we'll, you know, have some fun, have some more number nine fun. We should do that. That's a good one, Michael. <laughs> we got it. We'll do it. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> okay. Um, raise a hand if you would like to go next. All right, Dominic, and then George. So Dominic, I'm going to spotlight you first. All right. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> so uh, I don't have a Rachel spoon at the moment that I carved by myself. Um, I got one last year, and it was one of my first spoons I ever got from a, I call them professional maker. Oh. And um, I think in probably in, in every spoon I'm carving this, there are some parts from Rachel included. Mm -hmm. And um, so all the facets I'm making on, uh, on my spoons are just a copy from Rachel's spoon and um, the swoop and, and the handle I, I make most of the time comes from her spoon or comes from your spoon, Rachel. And um, yeah, you have a, big big influence on my carving and I'm very lucky to to be able to carve with you probably every day when I when I'm able to get up <laughs> that early <laughs> but uh, yeah so I really appreciate it and um yeah I will when I have finished my um the salad service I definitely I'm looking forward to carve something different and there will yeah. be some some spoons from you well, I know, I know what you're carving first, and it's not one of my spoons. But after that, um, yeah, you're gonna you're, you're gonna go a bit amoebasy, aren't you? Ooh. Yeah, we'll try that. But um, yeah, and see yeah, see what I'm going to do at first. Maybe it's or your spoon or something else. But it'll be interesting to see how how you tackle that template now that you've done so much practice with some of the elements on your own salad servers. It'll it'll be quite interesting to see that coming back. Uh, into whatever copy you do of, of my spoon. So I look forward to seeing that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to give it a try. <laughs> yeah. So cool. I'm not doing it only on cellar service. I've done it on, on, on most of my eaters. And um, yeah. Cool. So cool. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Dominic. That's great. And then George, if you're still ready, I'm going to spotlight you. Great. Yes, I'm. I'm ready to. <laughs> yeah, I find it really fascinating to to um, see the process of a sort of. Um, I think there are a few carvers out there which I call professional or per per perfect. It as long as perfect is possible. So it was really interesting to see the process from someone who has really established uh, a process. And I think I established a process process by myself so it was interesting to get really into it so i really get one log and try to split it up as much thinner as i usually do and much delicate as i usually do and much more efficient than i usually do because sometimes i have pl plenty of wood so normally i just go for the hardwood subwood split and just pick the nicest part of it so i try to use the whole log and i get six blanks out of it and uh, what I found the most interesting part of watching your ex work was this sort of helper facet. Um, so I stay really squarey when I normally X out a blank and this um, 45 degree angle to cut down the wood really helps to get much um, uh, more elegant to uh, some kind of fine blank. 
And, yeah, well, I, um, only, I only started doing that since uh, Fireside Sloyd's um, demo. So that's something oh, okay. that I adapted into my process following watching his. So I was much yeah, more so I, I was maybe not watching closely enough to, <laughs> to Ryan's uh, X work. <laughs> But I, I, I saw that too, and I find that already uh, very impressive. So, and for the, my goal for this challenge was to make some kind of much more delicate spoons and um, get into this production mode. So I X'd out all the blanks uh, in on one morning. And yesterday night I thought, okay, it's time to start with the spoons. So I made these six spoons in a row. Um, this was the first one, so I think this is really close to your your spoons yeah. in general. And I have one of your spoons that really helps to to look at it. The second one was I went to a little asymmetric bowl, which you also quite a lot do. Then I went back to square. Mm -hmm. Then I get back to round, and then I tried something something else Ooh. and so it was just nice to really bang these out so i was really i had to finish it them last night because today is a show and tell and it was interesting to yeah just stay tuned and really focus on that one thing and do so many spoons in such a short time to really get an impression of how to produce and how to be efficient and to try this and that and that. So it's that was uh, just a nice experience to yeah, really get into it quite deep, I think, in <laughs> a quite short amount of time and try to figure out how you do it and why it's so efficient and yeah, to, to adapt steps or just yeah, figure out what your process is. And and it's I think much more difficult when you already established your own thing. And then it's more much more interesting to find other stuff you can learn. So that was really, really an interesting thing. Well, yeah. thank you for commit, committing that. And also <laughs> something about, I'm really chuffed that you you try to be as economic as possible with the wood. I think that's, that's, that's really interesting feedback to me that um, you notice that about what I do and uh, that you try to, to copy even that part of it. So thank you. Um, yeah, really cool. Yeah, I'm always amazed. Yeah. Oh, sorry, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for for the challenge. It was a challenge again. So I, I um, left out a few challenges lately, um, but this was really um, another one. <laughs> thank you very much for that. It was interesting to me to see just the George still shining through things that looked mm -hmm. quite like my spoons, but then yeah. the facets were really George still, and the something about the shape of the hat not the shape of the handle in the plan view but in the profile view they just were still they were still you and that that was that was fascinating to to see really mm -hmm. yeah that voice and point of view still comes through so strong i agree it, it's pretty cool and um so yeah yeah i made three of your swoopy handles which i normally never do and mm -hmm. um the other three went out like the normal yes what that's my right <laughs> more, my, my style so i really i i think i find some in for my opinion nice words for it it's, it's maybe like writing someone else's name in your own handwriting so mm -hmm. it's um it's yeah just a combination of you, you can't get rid of your handwriting because it's just mm -hmm. you make it by with your hands so you can't really mm -hmm. copy 100 percent, but yeah. to to try to to try it is always a really nice combination or merging of two things yeah and that's how you learn <laughs> cool thank you george yeah um and rachel that's one of the things i really appreciated when you did the axing demo with kevin was helping him look at the available wood he had to see where the billets would come into it because I think you helped him get one, if not two more billets out of the wood that he had available for that demo. And even in your Instagram stories and posts, you always post a log and you talk about how many you're, you're gonna get out of that. And I'm always like, there's no way she's gonna get 16 spoons out of that log. And you do. So that's, I think, really cool to remind us all that you can get crank, 
you can get a well-formed and beautifully shaped spoon and also you know use the wood um, as resourcefully as you can so it's a very cool lesson as well yeah i have to admit that i sometimes use the double amount of wood for one spoon and yeah. this i was always thinking the whole time oh that's too small that's too small like like brett you know he just uses a little piece of scrap and thought never could do it and yeah it's it, you get even a crank and the swoop and everything so mm -hmm. that's really that's a really good point for getting really efficient on a little piece of wood yeah and it's it makes it more efficient in time too because you've then got less less material to maroon you know it's a win-win because you're saving on, on material and time. yeah if that template wouldn't have been so efficient i wouldn't have been able to do all these things until this morning <laughs> yeah, not many people could do that many in such a short time i don't think so. <laughs> all right um for whoever would like to go next, you can raise your hand. Okay, um, anyone? Because it, it looks like we've got a few folks who are just joining to listen in, which is excellent. Anyone else have a spoon? I didn't see any hands go up. So I want to see if anyone has a 29, a Rachel 29 spoon to do a show and talk. Here, here's the one that I did yesterday evening. And um, okay, nice. I just picked it up again. Beautiful. Yeah, cool. So this is again oak, and I'm gonna try because I just tried it myself. But if you can actually see how beautiful, yeah, there it is. Ooh, that's oh cool. yeah, that's like yeah, that ma medullary rays inside. Yeah. So I like that. That's cool. I wish I could. I wish I could like have a spoon with a little light in it that always shows this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You'll have to do a photo gallery of those, and they can be like, oh, "What are the old ink blots? The yeah. in the spoon." <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Those are cool, ink. though. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's all. Perfect. Um, anyone else have a Rachel spoon? It looks like we're done potentially with the show and tell, um, but feel free to wave your hand at me. And what I wanted to do next, um, first, thank you again, Rachel, so much. I'll show my spoons here in just a second. Um, but I wanted to let all of you know. Um, if has, anyone... Larry got, has Larry got his oh. hand up there? Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. I'm on two pages again. Let me double check. Larry. I don't see a Larry. I see a Larry. Larry Murphy, red and black and white check shirt. Nice smile on his face. Go on, do a smile. I don't see Larry. Who else am I missing? Oh, there you are, Larry. Thank you for the hand up. Oh my goodness. Um, sorry about that. Hi. No problem. Uh, I'm enjoying this. I've only been doing this for a year. This is my first rise up and carve zoom welcome thank you i first of all i watched the carving video before i watched the axing video and there are so many tips and tricks and techniques that were shared in that that was overwhelming a little bit um, like i said i've been carving for about a year and this is uh, my version of the 29. Beautiful. Yeah, lovely profile. Yeah. And this is probably the, one of the first ones that I've done with this thin of a bowl. Mm -hmm. And uh, the taper and the, the eating with it is, is so good. Uh, we had ham and beans and, and they scoop up really nice they hold a great amount and i i just love the, the lightness and the and the finish of all this then i went and wanted to try a little bit deeper spoon to bowl uh handle to bowl depth so i did this with that that's beautiful great what kind of I, I, maple I, this um, is maple splatted yeah. mason nice. and then i got some good wood uh, 
the maple, I have a tendency when I have some cuts along the, the uh, bowl in this region, mm -hmm. when I come across or come this way, it will chatter. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's frustrating. But I went and uh, got out a piece of Emmett's uh, cherry nice. and knocked this one out yesterday. Again, okay. trying to use the template as a model. Cool. The cherry grain's beautiful. Yeah. You see cool. the grain coming in here and coming up and swooping and yeah. it's just it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous nice. wood. I appreciate so I sit in the background a lot with uh, learning and and watching videos and and Instagram messages and those kinds of things. And I try to communicate with you guys mm -hmm. a little bit, uh, particularly when I like something, I'll, I will say something about it. Or if I have a question, I'll, I'll do that. I'm interested in the, uh, uh, the baking soda soap, mm -hmm. changing that uh, sapwood from the black walnut to a deeper, richer brown. That is just, seems to me like it's a technique that we need to have documentation on. I haven't seen it. So that's new to me today. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's those are the three, uh, the first, second, and third. Beautiful. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah. Really nice, Larry. It, can, I, can I give some constructive feedback? Yes. That middle one, I am worried about the swoop on the neck because you've got a piece with a really short grain. You see in the middle of that that right neck, here. yeah. And that that's that would just be. I'll be really interested if you use it and see how strong it is because sometimes we get worried about about short grain in the neck, and I don't mm -hmm. know how how much of that is over caution. Um, and it would be really good to 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 use that and just yeah have a feel. Um, yeah, it's it's. It's pretty sturdy. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Super. Really good work. I mean, I'm not afraid to, to twist yeah. it. And, I think in, until well, it's in your And hands, when you get food right. on it, it's not going to be any heavier it's than not, what I was just you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. You're right. You don't you don't put it under an awful lot. Unless you do what I did with a not very ripe um, avocado the other day. And oh. I managed to break a spoon on an avocado. <laughs> oh, wow. You got to wait well, until those are ripe, Rachel. That's a hard avocado. I know. It was stupid. <laughs> All right. Um, and it looks like thank Sean. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And Larry, welcome. We're really excited to have you. And the nice thing about Rise Up, too, is you can be in the background as much as you want, and you can hop up forward also. And, and for anyone else who may be new to Rise Up, the, the reveal calls we do kind of once a month when we have a template, everyone comes together as a group and the channels open 24 hours a day. There's kind of some standard times, 6 a.m. UK, 6 a.m. East Coast time. Israel has a carving time, I think it's 10 a.m. Um, so you can join in uh, and just kind of hang out with people while carving. These reveal calls, the first time I ever joined one was a reveal as well because it's I think a nice way to meet a lot of people and to enjoy it. And um, the painting demo we did a few months back has a small snippet on the baking soda soak, Larry. So that one you can go back to, and that one's about decorating spoons. And then if you look in the chat, Louie um, put a YouTube resource as well for the baking soda. So I would recommend um, Louie's uh, brilliant. So that, that resource, thank you so much for sharing that as well. So exciting. And Sean, I'm going to give you the spotlight quickly. There you are. So this is just not my spoon. This is a uh, Rachel spoon. It's uh, a uh, exact replica. I think it might be an OG perhaps. I'm just so thankful for this as we're seeing this as part of a spoon swap. I wanted to share that it is a plum spoon and uh, it probably doesn't show up on the back so well, but uh, initialed in there is uh, Coros, I suppose, uh, is plum in the date and Rachel's initials there. It uh, doesn't do it justice on the film, on the video here. Um, but I do want to ask a question if I can. I'm certainly a very beginner axe, uh, axe using an axe and I wanted some advice on uh, if I were to purchase an axe, uh, do you have any advice on on what type of axe to look for because when I look at axes uh, in the local hardware store they're certainly not the right axe I think that uh, you folks are using. Any recommendations on for beginner axe, uh, axe purchases? 
Rachel, do you want to start that? And then other folks can throw ideas out. Well, you can go off mute. We can have a uh, kind of- Can I have one minute to uh, take over? Um, okay. While oh. uh, you're back, you're back already, okay. Yeah, sorry. So this is an ax that is like an old, uh, it was found in, in, the, in the shed. Um, and so it's called, it's, it, it's one of the ones that you might find, you know, in a secondhand store um, and you can just put a new handle on it. So, and that's got a good weight to it. Now, I don't know off the top of my head what the weight is, but it's very comparable to my, to my uh, Francois Brooks um, carving axe. So if, if you can, I would recommend trying to find a secondhand axe um, and I would mix and match between these two. If obviously, if I've got stuff with with bark on um, that I'm not 100% confident that it's clean wood, it's got knots in. I'll use I'll use this one. <laughs> if I'm a bit more confident, I'll I'll, I'll use my grandson's Brooks. Um, but you can buy a good carving axe um, without spending too much money. The important thing is to then spend a bit of time getting a, a sloyd grind on it. Yeah. As much as possible i'm going to try and move it i think you can see enough um so that that's that's certainly an option that uh, you could consider but anyone else go for it yeah i think julian was I just wanted, yeah i mean i've got a lot to say about this but i'll keep it short i i just wanted to share that i have almost the exact two axes that rachel just showed us yeah <laughs> um fantastic yeah yeah, I, I definitely agree. Look for an antique hatchet, uh, find one with a good handle or make your own handle if you feel confident doing that. And that the number one most important thing is to have the correct grind on it. So if you don't have the ability to do it, um, find someone who does and ask them for a favor. Mm -hmm. um, so I know there should be someone in your whereabouts, like myself, who owns a Tormek and can grind your axe for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then almost any axe will work if it's given the correct treatment. Um, but I just wanted to add that if you don't, if you're not blessed with good antiques in your area, which some people are not, um, then the best budget option is one of these, which is the Wood Tools Carving Hatchet. Um, honestly, can't go wrong with it. They're totally solid. I, I own 10 of these um, for my students. And there, there is. I've never had a student who struggled with it. Um, they're they're really solid. And then, if you've got money to spend, it's a different story. Um, so if that's the case, then that's a different question. Yeah, and I appreciate that, Julian. Kind of bringing in like find something to restore if you can. Bring in that restoration. Bring new life to that axe. Wood tools, um, I know a lot of folks on Rise Up use it. So Sean, you can kind of ask around for personal experience and it sounds like a wonderful one. And then for those um, tool lovers, there's quite a few people who will talk days and days on their <laughs> um, more uh, um, expensive, expensive tools. So, so there's maybe more sponsored, there's, you know that, right? Yeah. There's, there's maybe <laughs> one thing more to say that the weight is also really in, uh, important for my opinion. So um, I would always go for a lighter X than a more heavy X. So I would say it's good to stay um, somewhere around five, 600 grams mm -hmm. um, or at most um, maximum a kilo. So there are a few people um, liking more heavy Xs, but it shouldn't be more than a kilo. Uh, but Julie wants to say something to that or can uh, fulfill this in, thingy go with I, I just wanted to say that that george and i um both have a lot to say about a lot of things and we almost always disagree <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah because i would recommend, I, I would my recommend opinion that we that, have a, an extended session that is called tools of the trade we could, yeah. we could definitely do that. That might be a yeah, good yeah. idea. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point, Caitlin, seeing as we're still recording. Is it worthwhile, you know, bringing this to, to a close and then... Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, so, Julian, um, in the chat, that. if you want to put some recommendations on axe weight, and then I'll float the idea to Chuck to have just a tools 
conversation and chat because I think there'll be a lot of value out of that. Um, I'm gonna, because I missed some hands the last time, I'll start my quick show and tell of my Rachel Spoons. And as I'm doing that, frantically wave if you have not gone and you want to go while I'm chatting and then I'll make sure to have um, some time. I'll scan too for you. Thank you. Uh, so how do I spotlight myself? Okay. So Rachel, thank you so much for the template. As many people have said, I also own a Rachel Spoon and it's just elegant, graceful, beautiful. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I took two cracks at this spoon. Um, I was working with apple wood and it was not friendly apple wood. It was very twisty, very um, kind of chaotic grain, but I was able to get one spoon um, carved from it that was successful. And this one, the crank, I tried to keep it at the far back end of the gray box that we had for our opportunity. Um, and I really love it. Um, I think I could probably have thinned this down a little bit more, but the, the swoop of the handle, and I even managed to get some facets, which is not a typical Kaylin skill. Um, but I really was really neat. Yeah, I was inspired by those long um, spirally cuts. So that was just everything I was repeating in my head was get the blank thin so that you can create those spirals. And I think that's the main takeaway that I had when watching Rachel and Kev Rachel and Kevin is I think I always tried to do spiral cuts when my blank was too thick. And that's why it ended up choppy versus that really good process of going over the plan view and profile view to thin it first so that you can get those planing cuts. So thank you, Rachel. That's um, great. For that. My other piece of apple wood was not as friendly and it had a really bad like critical crack in the back of the bowl that went through the bowl. I was trying to cut under it, cut under it, cut under it, and the crack was just too aggressive. So um because I was trying to cut under it, the spoon also ended up very thin. Uh, so this is how thin it is. And it, you can see there's even a dippy back here. And wow. the crack was firewood essentially until we decided to make it as a group decision into an olive spoon. Amazing. <laughs> so, and these what's, are what's really interesting there is how thin you can go on that spoon. It's crazy. And it's still like, decently strong so as an olive spoon and little pickles and, you, and things like that should be fine yeah. and you've compromised it by cutting through the bowl as well and it's still strong it's, it's astonishing still strong. yeah apple wood too and um and this is a nice way to just like anytime that i have cracks in the bowl similar to craig when he shaped the the bowl shape i think when you end up with cracks that's where you just get to be creative and there's no way i would have ever thought to do an olive spoon with a rachel template but it, mm -hmm. it now will live in my house and it's quite <laughs> fun <laughs> that's cool um, really i'm gonna do two equal distant things and then i just got tired of carving apples so it, it ended up <laughs> a little creative design well, Kay Kaylin, you might consider swapping it with one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Rachel, for this. Um, always excellent. And then I'm going to quickly talk about our next template. Rachel, did you see any other hands raised while I was chatting? No. Okay. I gave a really good scan and couldn't see anybody. So for the next Rise Up Challenge, um, it's posted online. You can find it at riseup.com underneath the uh, templates section. And this one's pretty cool. This one is by um, suggested by Matthew, Matt Plows. And it's um, an antique salvage of spoons that were found on the Vasa shipwreck. It's a Swedish boat that sunk on its maiden voyage. And there were a lot of artifacts collected from it and put into a museum. And Matt knows someone who's working on a PhD studying this ship and the artifacts that were left behind. So there's a potential of a call that we'll be doing. And then there's two spoons from the shipwreck. So there's one with kind of a um, tapered, really decorated handle. And then there's one that's a bit more of just kind of a utilitarian straight edged handle. 
but to me they look like short handled serving spoons because the bowls are, are quite large and then obviously not on the piece of paper but on the pdf you can click to hyperlinks to a wikipedia article about the shipwreck and the salvage and then clicking a link for each of the spoons themselves and that's where you can find some reference photos and they also have the photos with rulers so you can see the shape and the size um, of these so it's our first kind of real replica of an antique spoon from an antique article i do know um, julian's call spoon was also one that was in reference to a historic uh, spoon and artifacts as well so maybe not the first i'll correct myself on that uh, but the show and tell is going to be january 8th so we're going to hop over the holidays um, give everyone some time just to focus on on what what you may be doing for that time and then bringing this one up so ruac 30 will be starting off the new year with that next spoon template excellent and I'm going to start the screen share walking through the Instagram photos. So if anyone needs to take themselves off mute, you can kind of mill about the cabin. Um, but really lovely to have everyone on and to share your Rachel Spoons today. And again, uh, some new faces, new names today. Um, and, and folks who are just kind of watching, watching in as well, welcome. We're excited to have you here. And before we, we um, finish saying hello and thank you to everybody, thank you to Kaylin for stepping in at the last minute to, to, to do the, the hard work of managing all of the spotlights and um, spotting people and doing all of that. Well, thank I you so thank much. you to Mother Nature for not knocking my um, power out because we've had quite a, quite a big storm here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was blowing, so it's been blowing so hard. So hard, yeah, it's, um, I'm glad that I'm glad we didn't lose any power here. When Michael was saying his Zoom was cutting out, I was really worried we were going to get hit by some more weather. Yeah. Sun's up now, though. Nice. OK. Thanks for doing it, Kaylin. Yeah. And hopefully I've done this recording correctly versus the um, the last few. I know I've I've missed missed the opportunity to record those correctly okay so i have an idea sorry that we're right in the middle of just about to go to instagram but i'm wondering since we have a quorum present if uh you would entertain a motion madam chair per, to uh, retire spoon template number 31 and instead we'll we'll you know, replace it with all of our um 31 photos uh, in honor of Rachel, I, I don't know how we we can't go back and change um, spoon template 29 to 31, which would be appropriate, but very difficult <laughs> to do at this point. But I'm wondering if we could just, you know, like the Celtics do. Sorry, Craig, um, retire. You know, Larry Bird's jersey. Maybe we can retire number 31. We could potentially do that. That's a great idea, Brad. How do you feel about that, Rachel? Yeah, Rachel. <laughs> it's, it's it's an amazing thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'd, I don't know whether we're a quorum or not, but it's certainly worth considering. <laughs> I've got a spinning wheel here. I think these are kind of the first posts that we had. Oh, yeah, they're boring. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> for, for anyone who's new to Rise Up and joining us today, this is the link where you can find the axing video. So it'll, um, if you go and read about this, it'll direct you to our YouTube channel which will have the axing where Rachel walks Kevin through that process. And then we can start here with a pair of really lovely spoons. Um, yeah, these, Rachel spoons. Rachel spoons. I'm looking for the <laughs> species. Are these? Cherry. Cherry? Cherry. Yeah, mostly cherry. And watching Rachel ax these made me just realize that I need to be more selective with my wood because I was just struggling. <laughs> struggling with some crazy grain and here we've got jeff fryat who during yes. the axing decided to make a long-handled kevin <laughs> yeah well i think we should skip over that I know. <laughs> he obviously didn't follow the template <laughs> no the widest part of the bowl um is not aligned to the template exactly um these ones, Kevin did say, are very good for getting pickled olives out of a jar. 
for that very specific use case. <laughs> Um, and then I thought this one was helpful just to show that in the template, there are two crank options. And this one, Rachel, shows a really lovely kind of dolphin-esque spoon and then a standard crank. So this is a really cool way of just bringing variation into a consistent form. Um, so thanks for that post as well, Rachel. Here we've got Kevin's spoons from the axing demo. He also had a beautiful set of cherry, and then it looks like that's, um, and look at that beautiful co-rosing. Um, Rachel puts in the species of the wood on hers, and your handwriting is gorgeous, Rachel. And I try not to carve too much rhododendron. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> one. A long word. <laughs> Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, John. <laughs> Don't get angry. Don't get angry. <laughs> I just think it's funny that he started a second one, so it wasn't even just a one time joke. <laughs> Um, and then here's kind of where a few people talked about this today is having that just really clean edge versus digging in for the back of the bowl, which this is something that I, I think it, this is the first spoon I've tried it on Rachel and I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, I think I probably did start it as a time saver, but it's also because it just pleases my eye that cleanliness of finish. Yeah. And then the finished ones for John. I like I like the facet that um, um, comes up when you do it like that when you leave the material on the back, so mm, the, yeah. that you have an extra facet on the bowl side. Yeah. Yeah, and then it can just it just follows around for me that it goes from the micro chamfer to the bowl and then down the handle, and I like that. Yeah. yeah. Still old cherry. Yeah. This curve on the top of your spoon is just so beautiful. It's really gorgeous. That's Toby's, which was really fresh ash. I mean, our storm was a couple of weeks back and I think within two days, he'd started carving that, that ash from it. That um, wild. Those finishing cuts must have been brutal when it's dry. <laughs> No, it was really green. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, man. That's lovely. Yeah, ash is a beautiful wood if you get it in time. Otherwise, it's just, it's quite difficult on the hands and the tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really lovely. That one, Jeff. Yep, and Jeff's got some always really gorgeous wood, wood species. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really it's lovely. Like, I love that lightness coming to the end. Just yeah, yeah, and it's like a singular ring he caught on there, or maybe two there that are just that light wood. It's so pretty. And the grain on the back of the bowl there looks like it's got droplets of water on it. When I first yeah. saw it, I thought it was like oil droplets or something like that. Does somebody remember what type of wood that, that is? Uh, did he say? He usually does, but it doesn't look yes, like does it. China berry sound familiar? Oh, yes. China berry it might be that. Yeah, because somebody China asked, berry. didn't they? Oh, yeah. I, Big China berry right there. I've, I've carved China berry. I've turned it as well. It's yeah. lovely stuff. That's gorgeous. It's just the vibrancy of it is something that I've never seen in any of the wood species we have over, over here. I love that chip carving. That's I know. Awesome. And the pattern's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And how he kind of incorporates the chip carving and coal rosing into it. It's just yeah. cool. I am. Um, I've got I've got some some balls to share when we're when we're finished looking at, at the photos. If you're interested Absolutely. in more of that wood. Yeah, I'd love to see those after we're done with this, Julian, that you, you've got some gorgeous bowls. So it'd be fun to take a look at those. Woo. 
getting those handles thin. I like the uh, milk paint as well for the decoration. Yeah. Yeah. A few people did. It was kind of fun to see how many folks kept it plain, kind of honoring the grain, and then a few people doing the chip carving and painting as well. Logan Wheeler. I don't think I've met Logan, maybe. No, I think he's, he's from Australia or New Zealand. Oh. Yeah, yeah. New Zealand. Oh, okay. oh um, is he the younger carver that was on? Yeah. Do show and tell. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really nice. Beautiful. Story. Yeah. I think with those, he's the, we captured with the wood. They look mm -hmm. to a passing eye, you know, really much, very much like a spoon that I would make. And it's something to do with a split between the, the heart and, mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and this, we, we won't watch the whole thing, but this is the um, the intro to the, the edited uh, carving video. So I recommend anyone to hop on here and, and watch the, the work that Kevin did to <laughs> make it fun. Um, and then, uh, Kate, how did this work? Did did you pin that hole with a thorn? Did it work out well? Yeah, I did. I had the the hole went all the way through the bowl, like on the back, and so to the front, and it, like I could only just like barely push a needle through it. Yeah. Like um, so it was pretty tiny, but I just I stuck a, a hawthorn thorns on either side and like broke them off. The only thing that I would do differently is just breaking them off differently because like I, I wasn't able to like carve them flat. Yeah. They like just broke and then like they're, but I'm not like, it's not like, like spoons are precious, but they're not precious. You know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> not like a big deal, but I did want, I didn't want a hole in the bowl. So it does, it's, I actually <laughs> looked at it with a, um, tiny little magnifying glass and like it looked really good uh, it looked really well plugged so drop a super glue yeah that's what yeah that's another yeah way. I once tried to to stick a hole with a thorn and I used um, wood glue and that doesn't work so the the thorn was not really really connected with the wood glue so I would I recommend uh, epoxy or super glue mm -hmm. one little drop of super glue I've had um I've had good good success with no glue at all if you put the thorn in when the spoon is green. Um, uh, right. Yeah, it shrinks in. Yeah. So dry, oh, cool. dry, dry thorn, green spoon. Right. Yeah. I've that's done it with good. bowls. Um, I haven't tried it on spoons, but I've done it with bowls. This is Sunny's um, apple eating spoon, which has got some really lovely pinkish color in it. It's quite pretty. Almost looks more a little more like plum, but that's a really lovely one. And then, man, look at that wood in the background. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah, talk about holes. Sunny's here, the axe out. I love these progression shots. I do too. Yeah, this one's just kind of this is a view that we all see many times when we're just you know aiming I, down the spoon. <laughs> I came back yeah. to this one a lot. I really like the, the shots he took. Ooh. Yeah, this is um, Annie Sawyer, also Annie. from Northern Vermont, and she she rarely comes on here, but she's very very skilled. Yeah, super talented. This is beautiful. Oh, look at those. Reflex and this and plum, imagery. this this plum wood is just like gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> the most beautiful plum. <laughs> Almost as good the as yours. Absolutely Julie. most beautiful plum wood I ever ever saw. It is from, uh, it's not as gorgeous wood. as ours. <laughs> <laughs> Better than American. Oh, Dominic, Dominic you didn't get it. That's my wood. <laughs> <laughs> More of George's wood. Yeah. Oh, that looks familiar here from George. Beautiful. Yeah, it is. That I really try to spread this stuff all over. <laughs> <laughs>
And we know that German German plum wood is way better than American plum wood. Yeah. <laughs> and here we've got Larry's images. Um, Word. So much for posting those. So pretty. Yeah, it has really nice swoop. Mm hmm. Definitely, yeah. Great. That's really great. Anita Stevens, spoon axing process shot. It's very pretty. Ah, the layout. That's really nice. Eight, that's excellent. It's a great shot. Ooh, no sweeteners. <laughs> these are these are great. Yeah, I'm really good to see this. Oh, this green pattern, so pretty, Kate. Yeah, I was like faced with a dilemma because my wood was really curvy. Yeah. And I had to decide whether I, I was like, what would Rachel do? Like, <laughs> because, you know, I was like, I had to make sure that part, some part of the spoon had straight grain and I decided to keep the grain straight in the bowl and then the handle. Yeah. Oh, and you were so, so lucky on that handle split. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was going to split crazy. So I, I kept my ax to the side and <laughs> and, yeah. I, and then I just cross my fingers. <laughs> yeah. You were like, then we've got spoons by the sea. Um, that paint is beautiful from Nancy. That's really nice with the texturing too. Really effective. Yeah. yeah. She's always got the prettiest blues. She uses blue a lot in her work. And it's really gorgeous. And this little accent too is kind of a really neat um, yeah. kind of personalization on the spoon. I like that. Got Jorgens here. Yeah. It is good to see the photographs as well because often we've got really crap zoom cameras, but to see yeah. to see the decent photographs is great. Yeah, terrible zoom cameras. Always the lighting is whether it's in the morning or um, anything. It's hard to get good lighting while you're looking at it. And then Andreas. So nice. Yeah, very interesting book in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at the uh, the diesel pump from my tractor, but ah. I couldn't find it. And I thought, like, that's an interesting picture. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks great. Yeah. Oh, and the Kevin Haller process ones. Oh, that was nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, he did say yesterday when he was evaluating his spoons and yours, he put them all together in a group, um, that although your spoon is much better executed in shape and form, his has a better mouth feel. <laughs> so <laughs> he wanted me to pass that along. And he said that you can't be faulted because you don't have his mouth as a measurement for making your <laughs> spoons better but uh, uh, yeah well yeah. everyone's entitled to their opinion i guess uh, and then he said of course you would not assume that he would have a large mouth knowing him and his personality huh. oh my God. Uh, this like um emotional support chip carb spoon that Ian brought <laughs> Really cool. Uh, it was probably fiddlestick. Yeah. yeah I'd, I'd like to learn how to vent my anger like that or vent my frustration. I know. Right? I love that he just needed a, a little support burst of, of Does he feel better now though? Yeah, I know. How do you? <laughs> 
yeah that's an interesting mixture between the, the on the shoulder there between yeah. you know totally smooth and a couple of extra facets yeah yeah this one's a bright bunch peter bernhardt wow these ones are cool okay left right plum all of these are really nice amazing yeah. wood there wow yeah. this one black walnut with a gnarly knot yeah but that that's a good example of how they're all very different but they're all yeah. of a type yeah yeah, this is a really nice um, milk paint wash it, rather than just like solid colors. You can still see the green popping through it. And um, during the milk paint demo, Julian showed how to do this in a really lovely way if people haven't tried that out yet. This one's just the announcement of the call. Ooh, a cherry. Really nice, Larry. Dave, oh, that looks great. Look at, look at that snow. We're in the winter time. Cold spoons. It's a pretty maker's mark. Really cool. Ah, oh, Patrice, um, before you joined Patrice, people were trying to understand whether this was stout or espresso. So that was the. Uh, <laughs> Question of the day. What was the vote? Stout, <laughs> I'm going with. <laughs> yes, the vote was, yes. What time of day was the photo taken? And that determined I what. That helps because it was lunchtime, wasn't it? So <laughs> that, that was my lunch break. I'm going with oh, Stout. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for Guinness. Definitely Guinness. <laughs> well, and it would be like the very... more interesting. Yeah, a very reasonable pour of Guinness or a very large espresso. <laughs> I don't want this to is break anyone's heart, but it was espresso. Oh, no. <laughs> I wish it was a Guinness. Or a stout. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a pretty small dose of Guinness, but it's appropriate for lunch hour. Yes, very yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Lunch Guinness. Um, the green is so pretty in this, Patrice. You did a really lovely job really on it. Really beautiful, right? Yeah, that's gorgeous. It's pretty. still getting darker, I think. Um, I've oiled it about five times now, yeah. and it just keeps sucking the oil in, and it seems to be getting like even richer in color, if that's uh, possible. I think um, all that likes to keep like deepening its color. Um, I haven't carved much with it, but. That's really pretty. Very pretty. Okay, this one. Ooh, this I really like the the neck treatment, and then, yeah. man, your facets are beautiful, Jurgen. Those are gorgeous. Yeah. Very clean. They're like straight, sharp. I love it. How long did it take you to do that neck? I really like that that neck. Wasn't too bad. Just you. Definitely need the right blade for it. Thinner blade helps. This is just a beautiful clean cut too. It really shows yeah. off those. Um, you really got a plan for that rider. Right? You'll. Yeah. There's two facets in there. Yeah. yeah. And then. Yeah. For the group, um, medullary ray, rays, ray flex, or chatoyance. These are medullary rays, right? Well. Mm. Yeah, those that's medullary rays. Okay. I'm still learning um, the difference between those three terms or if there is a difference. Well, oh. the thing is when you see medullary rays from a specific frame of reference, mm -hmm. that is what a ray flick is. Okay, got it. Yep. That makes sense. And then when it's perfectly cortisone or um or radial orientation you don't see the rays because they have no length so you just see the right. flex. yeah that makes sense nice. uh, but quarter sawn white oak is what is used in so much furniture and what you're seeing are these enormous medullary rays yeah. almost parallel to the plane of cut yeah 
Yeah, but but that's because wood's not perfect, but the plane is flat. So that's yeah. why you see the, the flex. Right. And so in riven wood, you wouldn't see them because it would split along those rays and they would be in the plane of cut. Yeah. Oh. And then chatoyance is is different. <laughs> that's that is really kind of the uh, the sure. opalescence of the wood when it's mm -hmm. that that's the the first two are terms for structure the other one's a, a, a visual effect glitter glitter um <laughs> glitter. oh look at that plum i look at that plum yeah, yeah. some really yeah. nice plum i wonder where that came from this German little plum. well now he destroyed it because he baking soda it and got rid of the yeah. paint let's all be honest no i'm <laughs> <laughs> he ruined it didn't he george Throw it out. No, this little, like, I don't know why this is so pleasing, but that tiny little sapwood oval, just so cool. I have one meter left from that stuff. Really? And this is the riches of wood. It's so pretty. Yeah. And um, but this is with baking soda, as Orange said. So yep. not this pinkish, but still nice. Yeah. Yeah, and the baking soda, if anyone's new to trying it, I always recommend to use some larger wood chips before you soak the spoon to see like what effect it'll have. Sometimes it'll make oranges more orange, but other times it'll like take a pink or a green away. And then completely different, it'll turn it gray green. Um, so it, it can have some pretty crazy effects, which are fun. Um, oh, another square one. I don't think we saw uh, Jams, jam, yawn. Hey, hey. <laughs> these are beautiful as well. Look at these little gorgeous grain patterns. Bulky, really pretty. So accent template there. Ooh. That's gorgeous. Um, George, I know that you know this carver. Is it Jan or Jan? Jan, he's German. Oh, Jan, thank you. Yeah. I, I thought that I had butchered that the first time I said it. So. Yeah, he's he's also really nice. He's a really good one. Yeah. I think all the people from that area, they learn carving in school, actually. Oh, cool. primary school or something uh, like that and you see yeah. that definitely that they have had a um, nice in the hand a knife in the hand before yeah when they're really young when it comes second nature this one's got some crazy medullary rays in there look at those that's awesome and he's one of the few carvers who really like oak beside andreas <laughs> yeah yeah uh, these are this one looks almost ebonized i think he said he was going to do some of that Mm -hmm. on the last post before oh, okay get get creative oh john look at this oh look at that one look at that one Ooh. that's pretty looks very nice that's very pretty ah, this is gorgeous green acacia green, yeah yeah. Ooh, so that's the log I got. That's where I started. I just wanted to show everybody how pretty that that wood was before I even did anything. Yeah. Yeah. A really pretty, like almost ombre effect versus like a, a clean split. Like it has some really nice um, changes in it. Anita again. Oh, that's that slight pinkish tone in there. That's really pretty. And what a lovely backdrop. Yeah. <laughs> nice facets on the handle as well. Cham chamfers. Oh, that's a pretty curve. Really elegant. Sunny Beach. Little tiny horns on this one. Yeah, I don't know what you'd call them, but they're cut. That's cool. Sort of scallop shoulders. It's like some sort of dress that Sue's might make. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Um, 
Oh, even Stephen's asking if there's a name for the shoulders. That's pretty cool. Also, I'd like to point out that this is a sunny beach spoon that does not look like walnut, which is a rare spoon in the world. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of horns for that, but it, yeah, it's kind of. It's it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is that apple um, from Jody's. I love the way it went dark at the end, you know, and you've got that sort of natural color at the end and natural shape. It goes together really well. It does. And I, I originally thought she had baked it, but it's so cool to hear that Did that was just a natural darkening of the wood. Did she bake in some? Uh, no, it was just an aged, aged log, aged wood. Because uh, usually the apple's very, very light, mm -hmm. early, you know. Unless, yeah, maybe it was really old. Yeah, I got that yeah, impression. Well, it's from her grandparents' tree, right? From her grandparents' tree, and it sounded like it was a tree that had like split and already started some decomposition, but not rotting. And then um, she carved these for Christmas last year. So this this spoon must have been in the log aged at least a year. Okay. Cool. I, Jody, I don't know if you're on. I, I can't see past it, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. Spoons and water, George. This is gorgeous. Yeah. Crazy show off. I know. <laughs> but it's not, is it plump? I think I think we're missing some plum there. Those those Here. might be the skinniest. No, I, I, I don't want to bow you with with plum. <laughs> so this one's those might be the thinnest um necks yeah. you've seen, right? Those are so narrow. Yeah. I have to really check if they really hold strong when they're dry. They're beautiful. Is it cherry, George? Yeah, it's cherry. That's pretty. Wow. Look at this line. So pretty. Thank you. Nice. Well, and that mm -hmm. looks like it's it for the show and tell. So I am going to um, figure out how to stop sharing. Stop the recording and then we'll be free to go. Thank you all so much for joining and thank you, Rachel, for the uh, the 29 temple reveal. It's good. Hey, thank, thank you all for having